This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043. His new album is The Elephants of Mars, and maybe you just saw him at the Beacon Theater on the Earth Tour. All the tour dates, Satriani.com. Our good friend Joe Satriani is here. Joe, congrats on the great new album. A massive positive response from your fans and the press around the world. I've been checking out the comments on every, on all the videos and everything. Um, but I want to touch on this first, the title, The Elephants of Mars. And it seems to me that looking back at some of your album titles, there is always a theme of the extraterrestrial, the space, aliens, planets. And for our listeners, I will read just a few of the more obvious album titles to this point. Not of this earth. We'll go there first. <laughs> Surfing with the Alien, Time Machine, Crystal Planet, Is There Love in Space, Black Swans and Wormhole Wizards, Shockwave Supernova, Shape Shifting, that's your last album, and this one, uh, The Elephants of Mars. So what was it? Was it Star Trek or Star Wars or, or something <laughs> like that that pointed you in this sort of kind of direction as a child? Or Yeah, probably. I mean, uh, I grew up at that time when there was so much... Uh, humorous uh, and challenging science fiction on television uh, and great books. Uh, so maybe the first one I got into was a collection of Ray Bradbury oh, yeah. stories. Oh, yeah, right, of and, course. Yeah, moved on to Harlan Ellison. And, and even Kurt Vonnegut, to me, was a kind of interesting social commentary science fiction blend. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but when I was really young, it, it uh, came to me that uh, we were – here on Earth, we were actually in outer space. Outer space wasn't somewhere far away. Right. And and it came about because I was staring out the window in my classroom in, in second grade. And the teacher... In Carl Place? Uh, this is actually, I was going to St. Bridget's Catholic School at the time. Okay. In, in Westbury. All right, yeah. And uh, so the nun called me out in front of the class for staring out into space. And uh, uh, what I said to her was, you mean I can see outer space from here? I was so impressed when she said that, that I thought I should keep looking because that's right. We're in outer space. We're right. not outer space isn't somewhere else. Um, and and that, you, that you still remember that to this day. I do because it was a, a revelation Important, to me. Important. Yeah. Yeah. The rest of the class, of course, had a good laugh, but <laughs> <laughs> it changed my life. Was there ever Joe Satriani music in an episode of the X-Files? And if there uh, wasn't, why wasn't? Why wasn't there? I it don't seems know. perfect for that. I think at some point, uh, producers of films and television of science fiction decided that electric guitars were not part of the science fiction future for some reason. Yes, it's not always all electric guitar, though, in your songs, though, especially yeah. on this album. You know, yeah. there's a lot more stuff going on. It's not you're just you shredding all the time. That's there's right. There's a lot yeah. more emotion going on. Yeah, but somewhere know? along the way, I think, I, I mean, I think you could, if you think about it, it got very robotic. You know, the idea of in the future, things get colder, less personal. Um, and uh, there's always this challenge with the robot world, this the uh, the, the Borg collective, you know, so to speak. And yeah. Computers taking over or aliens not being, not having hearts, you know. So it was always represented by synthesizers. Basically. Of course, keyboards, yeah. yeah, and and machines making music, and that got everybody in the mood to to accept what they were looking at. That, yeah, that was very machine like. Well, you make otherworldly sounds from your guitar, though. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, have you, has it ever been you, your music ever used in films or television shows or commercials? And and if so, are you cool with that? Yeah, uh, I think uh, you know, I I bet there's maybe ten credits if we really thought hard about it and there and some of them are funny like i think problem child 2 uses satch boogie in a oh okay yeah food fight scene you know um and so and i i grant licenses to uh various shows and movies as they come up uh the best one though was um uh going back cameron crowe's movie um back in i guess it was uh 89 uh, he had called me about uh, writing some music for a kickboxing scene. Ah. And um, and so I remember just coming up uh, with a song, One Big Rush, for that. And it was just really great to to be able to uh, look at a film while it was still in production and to come up with music rather than someone just calling saying, we want to license 
you know, Satch Boogie oh, for and a that's food how you do it when you're kind of doing a score or a soundtrack with actually a monitor in front of you and seeing things, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, that'd be cool. But I realized early on that I really liked writing music that was about my life and then walking on stage, uh, stages around the world and playing it for the fans who already responded to the music. To me, that that can't get any better than that. You know? Right, because that's an almost an instant sort of um, review. You know what I mean? It is, and yeah. you sh- and it's a sharing moment. It yeah. really is a sharing moment between you and your fans, and uh, but so sitting in a in an office somewhere and writing music uh, for a movie that maybe has nothing to do with you, and you're writing cues for violent scenes and things that you really don't agree with. I just thought I don't think I want that job. Oh yeah, this yeah. job is way better. I get to play guitar and have fun, and and it's and it's music that's about my life rather than. Some movie. Yeah, totally. Well, last question on this space sort of uh, alien sort of topic. Have you ever reached out to Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk asking to uh, buy a ticket on a (laughs) spaceship? No, they should be reaching out to me. Right, they should be. Playing your music for the people that go up in the in the spaceships. Uh, That's so. That's really funny. Um, Yeah, I mean, there are so many things they should be doing. That's you know low on the list. Yeah. (laughs) If you have that much money, you should be solving problems. I hear you. Uh, right um, down here on the street. We're know. speaking with Joe Satriani, the new album, The Elephants of Mars. Uh, he's on tour now on the Earth Tour, all the tour dates, Satriani, satriani.com. Some interesting titles of songs on the new album. I want to ask you about the inspiration for them. The first one that jumped out to me, of course, is East 104th Street, NYC, yeah. 1973. <laughs> Tell us about that address and that song. Uh, yeah, between uh, First and Second Avenue, that's where my father was born and, and raised. Uh, that's where we went on Sundays uh, to visit my grandparents as a young kid. And so, uh, because of when I was born, the 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 '60s to me, that neighborhood was a wonderland. Uh, in in warm weather, we'd be out on the street and and playing with the kids and. Uh, and walking around. And, uh, as I got older though, I started to realize what was happening in that part of the city. And that would, that would have been 70. So, uh, I become a guitar player in 1970. Uh, I'm 14 years old and you know, your eyes get wider as oh, yeah. you get older. And suddenly I realized, okay, this isn't such a wonderland after all. The city itself was going through a rough patch there in the seventies. Um, and I, I guess I, I got to this point where I wanted to create a soundtrack that would include everything that was uh, happening in the city, everything I was exposed to as a young musician, um, as a kid who had grandparents who were uh, part of the city and um, all my experiences. So I, I kind of came up with that groove that, you know, it's a mixture of, of rock and and jazz and soul and funk and it's kind of all mixed together but that's kind of like what that neighborhood reminded me of you know? i had steve Vai on the show oh, uh, great. a few months back he told me about the pizza oven incident <laughs> uh which i'm sure you heard about um being an italian american from long island originally do you have yeah. a pizza oven in your backyard in N- california no no i've always felt that you need to go out to get pizza i'm a i'm a big fan of pizza places yeah and and having a relationship with your local pizza place, you know, right. it's very important. So the idea of making it home, I don't know, it takes, it takes a very important social thing out of the loop <laughs> that I wouldn't want to do uh, every time, I, maybe once or twice I've been to a friend's house where they've had a pizza oven and I think it's kind of a cool idea, Yeah, but I miss going out and having pizza. It's just one of those things. Do you have a like. favorite place that you might still go to in New York City uh, if you're here? Actually, the the place that I got stuck on uh, when I was a young kid was a place called Frank's in Westbury. And, okay. And that was the place we always went when we shouldn't have been eating pizza. You know, you just say when there's nothing else to do, it would be let's go to Frank's and, you know. Uh, but uh, I don't, I, you know, those early memories of, of, the perfect pizza at the time when you're really hungry, they never leave you. Oh, it's like, <laughs> it's imprinted on your soul. I call that taste bud orgasm. That's what you know it is. What yeah. Mean? Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Joe Satriani with us, the new album, the elephants of Mars, uh, all the tour dates on the earth tour, Satriani.com. I want to play the title track from the album, Joe, 
Uh, you made a really cool, fun, and funny video for this, directed by your son, Zizi. Yeah, that's that's all from his mind. <laughs> and it's like, are you all characters in a video game that looks like it's like uh, from the 80s or something? That's right, yeah. He wanted to do like a 16-bit uh, distorted video game thing. Uh, and, you know, Zizi's got some absolutely crazy ideas, and we've done a lot of videos and, and films together. Um and uh, so that we we had such a great time doing that. That was so much fun. Everyone go look at that video. It's on yeah. uh, Satriani.com, of course, YouTube and all the places. Yeah. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about the phone calls you received from David Lee Roth oh. and, and Alex Van Halen. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Yeah, so tell us, you know, when that happened and what did they say? And then, I mean, I know what you said recently, but just for our listeners Give us sort of a recap of everything that happened there. Well, the, the the simple thing is I get a call out of the blue from Alex Van Halen, uh, who I've never met until then, and uh, and he poses the unimaginable to me, which is uh, to go out uh, with a Van Halen tour playing guitar. And, you know, I, as I've told other people, I heard my voice saying, yeah, I'll do that before my brain really thought, don't say yes. That's like an impossible thing to do. You can't replace Eddie Van Halen. Nobody can, you know. Uh, but I had such a good conversation with Alex and and, uh, and just getting to know him uh, on a few phone calls. And he brought uh, Dave into the loop. I had met before, but I can't really say I, I, I know the man, you know. And, Can uh, anyone say that? I don't know. <laughs> has he ever been here? I mean, he has. And yeah. oh my God. Yes, yes. I mean, it was amazing, but like, we're like, what, what, how is that? Where does he keep the batteries? Because yeah. it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. And, and so the, the conversations were like that. And we came close to doing uh, that uh, sort of coming out show that New York City was holding. What was oh, that right. Last year? Central Park. Yeah. That one, yeah. And that would have been frightening because it was only three weeks away. And I was still, you know, listening to the Van Halen stuff, but still working on an album. So um, it wasn't like we were prepared. There was no bass player. They hadn't really told me who was going to play bass. And then there was the whole controversy about who should actually be in the band. And, uh, you know, I was on the outside. I'm just some new guy, you know? Yeah. So, uh, I kept wondering, I was the one saying, who's playing bass by the way. And is Sammy going to come by? And did you talk to Mike? And, um, so, um, conversations kept going on and on. I, I met with Alex at one point when I went down to LA and, uh, but I, I think uh, there's some internal stuff that needs to get worked out with the family and then the the, uh, the Van Halen band family, which is kind of big. Um, I, again, I feel like I'm not in that, you know, uh, close to, to the top of that queue. And uh, I've many times I've told Alex, like, are you sure, like, me? <laughs> you know, because I, I don't perform like Eddie, you know. Uh, I'm just like a super fan. And I can certainly play this stuff, but, uh, you know, Eddie was such an original. It's just the way he ran around on stage and sang and played. It's just, you know, it's, it's well, amazing. It's, I also saw your comment, uh, about after seeing Wolf perform at mm, the Taylor Hawkins yeah. uh, tribute shows. That was beautiful. Wasn't it? I the, mean, ridiculous. I mean, perfect. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, but you, I think you said, you know, why doesn't he do it? Yeah. Why, why me? You I know? know. I know. I, that's the, that's the first thing I thought after I was just like, like every other Van Halen fan, just like so relieved to see the, a very beautiful expression, you know, of a son playing his father's stuff. And after all the, the weight must be on Wolf's, you know, shoulders about this whole thing. Uh, and he's had to deal with Dave and everybody else commenting about this kind of stuff. And he just went and settled it right then and there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I thought to myself, well, he should do it, and maybe just he and his Uncle Al should just work this out. Right. and and Makes sense. Yeah. And and it would be nice if somehow that Dave and Sammy could, you know, sort of kiss and make up and, right. and figure out a way to do it right. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, and I know, you know, I know Sammy quite well, and we talk all the time, and, and he's always open to, to move forward and, and mend fences. So uh, uh, I'm hopeful that maybe he can you know, have a hand in that. 
Joe Satriani with us, his new album, The Elephants of Mars. And you can get all the tour dates on his Earth Tour at Satriani.com. Joe, this will be the last time I'm speaking to you in this building. We'll see you in the new place uh, sometime soon. Uh, But fantastic. Great, great congratulations on the new album. It's just really, really good. Everyone should go out and buy it. And uh, please stay safe on the road and, you know, have a great tour. Thank you. Thank and, you. And uh, we'll, we'll see you soon. Yeah, no, I may just want to pull something off the wall before I go. Just I don't, as yeah, a... <laughs> I, you have my permission right away. <laughs> don't worry, it won't be a guitar or anything like that. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Thank you. This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043.